I'm gonna be honest. I have a huge amount of work to do for this video that's coming up on Friday that I'm working on right now. And I just kind of want, not necessarily a filler video, but a video that I can just kind of freeform and just kind of talk and I don't have to script. So I want to talk about this space grind that I've been on lately. So if you guys did not know uh, on my Twitter and everything, um, my internet basically cut out, at least to a certain extent. Uh, I'm getting way high ping and way high, um, just crazy connection as far as Overwatch and, and online and multiplayer games and all that kind of stuff go. And I'm just, it's just going crazy and I'm trying to get my ISP to out here and they keep postponing. It's been crazy. It's, I'm trying to get this thing back on, but it's just not working. Um, I have since gone into my Steam library with my over 100 games and started playing just some games I could, thought I could kill time with, you know? And I came to two in particular. I came to Faster Than Light and I came to Kerbal Space Program. Both games I had less than five hours in when I first started playing them. And I have, I think, about ten hours in each now, which isn't a lot. I'm going to be honest. It's not even a lot for me. Um, but the fact that I played these games after I would basically would never come back to them and the fact that I played these games and enjoyed pretty much every second of them is really, really interesting to me in how you can switch your perspective from game to game just by having something as simple as your internet going out. So if you guys do not know, Faster Than Light is basically, uh, I think it's what you're seeing here, basically it's a strategy game where you're running away from this big bad alien bad guys that are chasing you down because you have information that will lead to their destruction. Now, you have to get across this galaxy to the good guy area on the other end while you jump from star to star from system to system encountering encountering new problems on the way so you jump from system to system and star to star in those systems as you run away from this mass army of bad guys that are trying to kill you now these guys can actually catch up to you they go at a constant rate and if you don't maneuver yourself right if you don't go far enough if you don't go if you don't take the best option to get to your goal, you will get caught eventually. So this game is strategy in the sense that, as you can tell, it's very stale. And stale not in a bad way, stale as in it doesn't move a whole lot. Like, I think I'm running this game at like 700 FPS is how much it doesn't move. Um, what you can do in this game is you have people, you know, and you have rooms. And each room connects to a different system on the ship. So you have the sensors room, you have the shields room, you have the weapons room, you have the pilot room, so on, so on, and so on. Now, what you can do is you can get those people to man those rooms to boost those things. So if I have my weapons boosted, maybe I can get my weapons to recharge faster so I can shoot faster and I can do damage faster, so on, so on, and so on. If I get my guy on my shields, I can get my shields to recharge faster after they have depleted so it's really interesting in the fact that you're moving guys around from place to place while you're shooting at these enemy ships that are trying to kill you um and then you're trying to figure out which slot to hit um you're trying to put out fires that come up and you're trying to manage all these three all these three to four to five things at different times or and at the same time sometimes um that end up just taking over everything you want to do you know you want to get through this galaxy peacefully no I'm sorry there's a pirate there now your ships on fire now you one of your guys is dead and you have to run away this game is actually really cool and I enjoyed it a lot from the time I played with it but it is really a hardcore title title which is kind of weird in the space genre um, you don't see a whole lot of space games that are hardcore right and I'm not saying it's hardcore in the sense that like it's um it's like you're gonna die really easily it's roguelike that's what it is it's roguelike sorry that term escaped me it's a roguelike game you know you die once you restart that's the end of it and i have actually yet to beat this game i've actually yet to get to my objective in the end game and i have yet to beat the game so i'm actually really trying hard to do it and i've gotten different ships and stuff because you can unlock different ships there is a lot of replayability in this game because each star you travel to a new opportunity arises and everything from fighting to storage to helping systems to navigating meteor fields to having like ion things take out your shields this game actually has a lot of diversity for what it is and for how indie it is like you're seeing it on screen now this game is indie as 
it's crazy how indie this game is. Uh, I try to keep profanity off the channel here, but like, no. It is freaking crazy, dude. This game is like the epitome, uh, epitome of, of just indie games. Like, when you think of an indie game, this is what you think of. And for what that is and for how it's presented and everything, I think it actually has a lot of diversity as far as combat and your ship and uh, what you can do in the game go. Furthermore, I've been playing a little bit more of Kerbal Space Program, and I think you guys have known what this is. This is one of, or do know what this is. This is one of, like, quote, the early access games. This is one of the games that actually escaped, in my terms, early access hell. Because what happens in early access is that they get stuck in this, the developers get stuck in this mindset where the game has to be perfect because they're getting so much input. They want everything to be perfect. They want to please everybody. And that simply cannot happen. So, what ends up happening is they get stuck in early access forever and ever and ever and they never get out of early access and they can never put that you know the title that we're out of early access that whole celebration thing up Kerbal Space Program did not please everybody but it did get out of early access it did kind of escape that realm and it was one of the first games to do so not necessarily the first games to get out of early access but it was one of the first games in early access when early access was uh, announced and created on the Steam Store, and it was one of the w biggest ones to come out. It kind of gained popularity through early access and how deep it ended up being, and it ended up being a really interesting space sim where you can get just about anywhere. So you're set on Kerbin, and you are Kerbals, which are these little uh, people that are, I don't know, they're people, I guess, and you're tasked with going to space. And you are tasked with, you're tasked with, with just exploring the cosmos, honestly. And it's really cool. It's super open-ended, and the tutorial is 100% optional. And I would fully recommend taking the tutorial because this game is freaking hard and it's really, really deep. Uh, this game has everything from SAS, which I don't know what it stands for to multiple rockets and aerodynamics and air and force and throttles and multiple rockets and you know parachutes and air pressure and a lot more it honestly it, it has a lot more than you would think out of a game called Kerbal Space Program like what even is a Kerbal right uh, I'm actually looking it up on Steam right now you can hear my keyboard but this game honestly looks like a not necessarily kids game but it looks like a it looks like a silly game and it is silly to an extent as uh, the characters, or not necessarily characters, but the people involved, the people who are helping you through your journey on, into the cosmos are uh, comical in a sense. But it really is a simulation game at its core. And it's a really deep simulation game at its core to be completely honest. There's no multiplayer in it, but it really is just a true space sandbox. And it is crazy deep. And that's what, honestly what I love about it. It has a little, a little bit of a charm on how you can play it at the minimum level where you can get out of Earth and you can do all, this thing, all these things with 10 rockets or you, can use run ro or you can use one rocket if you use it right. You can get out of Earth and go to the moon with only one rocket if you use it right. It, it's honestly super deep like, I, like I've been saying. And if you guys know anything about me, I love deep games. I love games like Civilization. I love games like Fallout 4. Games that are deep. Games that are they seem like they're never ending and that's what Kerbal Space Program is and it could be because I've yet to meet someone who's gotten to the moon but I'm I don't know anyone who plays Kerbal Space Program so that's probably why but you get my point I've yet to meet someone who's gotten to the moon I hope you guys enjoyed this video because it wasn't it was fun for you to make to be completely honest I enjoyed making this because it is fun to talk about games that I play you know I don't only play Overwatch I don't only play Civilization 6 I actually have been playing a lot less of Civilization 6 for reasons I'll talk about in a different video, but talking about games that you actually play is fun, and I might do it more often. Maybe. We'll see how this video does. With that, my name's been Z-Star. If you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you guys dislike this video, go ahead and give it a dislike. Then go down in the comments below and tell me why you rated it like you did, and I'll see you guys in the next video.